The forces and phenomena that we have just discussed are crucial in understanding aerosol behavior in a variety of important settings, such as in the collection of particles by filters. In filters, dirty air passes through a filter and comes out clean. As you may have guessed, particle size plays an important role in the collection efficiency, with some particles hitting the filter and being collected, while other particles pass through. For a moment, I want us to consider a single fiber in the filter. The airflow bends as it moves around the fibers, much like the airflow moving up and over a car on the highway. Large particles have a high probability of hitting the fiber because inertia causes them to deviate from the airflow streamlines. Small particles, in red, also have a high probability of hitting the fiber because of Brownian motion. However, medium-sized particles, in orange, typically around 300 nanometers in diameter, are affected minimally by diffusion or inertia and go with the flow, following the streamlines to the other side of the filter. The combined effect of diffusion and impaction results in a collection efficiency curve that is typical of filters and other devices, as we'll see. Here I show particle collection efficiency by size, for two different kinds of filters. The purple curve is typical of a low efficiency filter, like a low cost furnace filter. High collection efficiency is achieved for very small particles, say 10 nanometers in size, due to diffusion, and for large particles, larger than say 5 micrometers due to impaction. However, the lowest collection efficiencies occur for particles in the middle size range, about 300 nanometers, because diffusion and impaction have the least effect on these sized particles. In contrast, some filters, known as high efficiency particulate air filters, or HEPA filters, shown in magenta, are designed to have high collection efficiency. Even for these filters, however, the lowest collection efficiency occurs for particles with a diameter of 300 nanometers, a size associated with low diffusion and inertial forces. With good design, Collection efficiency of a HEPA filter is typically 99% or greater, even for particles of this size. Electret filters leverage electrical forces to improve the collection efficiency of filters. In this collection efficiency curve, a filter with uncharged fibers has a collection efficiency curve resembling a poor home filter furnace, regardless of whether the particles are charged or not. If instead the fibers of the filter are charged, then performance is dramatically improved for both charged and uncharged particles. These type of filters are sold commercially under the brand name of Filtret by 3M and also used in respirators. The same forces and phenomena dictate if a particle will transport through a tube. Big particles settle due to gravity Small particles will diffuse due to Brownian motion, and medium-sized particles will tend to go with the flow and pass through the tube. Passing through a tube is critical in applications like particle sampling or in local exhaust ventilation ducts to avoid clogging. Transport through something is characterized by penetration which is 1 minus the collection efficiency. So in this plot, a penetration of 100% means that all of the particles pass through or penetrate the tube. And that of 0 means that all of the particles hit the walls of the tube and do not transport to the other side. Very small particles tend to diffuse to the walls, resulting in low penetration. Medium-sized particles, in contrast, like the orange particle, go with the flow, and have a high penetration efficiency. Big particles settle due to gravity and wind up on the bottom walls of the tube and have low penetration again. We can now understand particle deposition in the respiratory tract, which can be thought of as a series of simple tubes. Airflow in the upper airways is fast moving 
with few large tubes, whereas it is very slow in the lower respiratory tract before terminating in the alveolar region. Big particles tend to impact where velocities are fast and the air curves, like in your nose, or settle due to gravity where air slows down. Medium-sized particles go with the flow, often being breathed in and breathed out. Small particles tend to hit the walls where dimensions are small and velocities are low because of Brownian motion. The net result is that the fraction of particles that deposit in the human respiratory system looks like a bad filter. So here we show a respiratory deposition fraction, the fraction of particles that wind up depositing in the respiratory tract. Here a deposition fraction of 1 means that all particles deposit, whereas a deposition fraction of 0 means that no particles deposit. Only about 15% of 300 nanometer sized particles deposit, highlighted with a red arrow, because neither diffusion nor inertia do much to move this particle size away from airflow streamlines. Thus, a particle of this size, if inhaled, is breathed back out 85% of the time. In contrast, nanoparticles deposit with higher efficiency due to diffusion. For particles larger than 300 nanometers, inertia causes deposition to increase until about 5 micrometers. Deposition then becomes progressively lower because larger particles have sufficiently high gravity settling velocities to make them difficult to aspirate into the respiratory system so they aren't even available to be deposited inside the respiratory system.